Welcome back. Fino here with a guide for tuberculosis McGee, Soji Okita. No one calls her Soji, weirdly enough. Ah oh, well, guess I'll stick with convention. When she's not suffering from a bad case of mysterious anime space aids, this five-star saber's chopping off heads and stabbing people with her sword. And I'm 100% she's coughed on it, so uh, yeah, have fun with that. Okita's first skill is Shukuchi. It's a clutch quick buff, which is kind of a shame because 3 is the magic number for quick servants. In practical terms, you pop this with your NP and that's about it. Skill 2 is Weak Constitution. It gives Okita a single turn of increased star absorption. It's impressive considering that sabers have decent absorption to begin with. Then again, the duration's a bit annoying, though it'll come in handy for team comps where she's not the sole attacker. Skill 3 is Mind's Eye. It's a single turn of evasion, but it also comes with 3 turns of crit strength. Generally, its defensive use takes priority, but you can set up some pretty nasty crit turns, especially in combination with supports like Hans or Waver. Okita's Noble Phantasm is Mumio Sandansuki. It's a single target nuke that ignores defense and then decreases defense. Because that second part is tied to overcharge, you should put this after any non-damaging NPs. Generally, I'd put this before other damaging NPs, since having a 30% defense reduction for those is more useful than having another 5% for the next two turns. Taking all this into account, Okita is a servant geared around massive burst turns, whether through crits or Mumio Sandanzuki. So let's build some teams around that. If you're a new player and you luck into an Okita, you can assemble a fairly robust team right away. Caesar and Hans are both low rarity servants with strongly synergistic kits. Gaius has NP damage and attack steroids, which combined with Okita's quick buff, will give you some crazy NP turns. He also has a targeted crit buff that also amps star gen. The only catch is that it comes with a defense debuff, so if you mess up, Okita's gonna be in a world of hurt. Hans has grit synergy and an NP that can offset your team's frailty. It's a very cost-effective setup. Like a lot of quick servants that aren't Jack, Okita has consistency issues. Her short skill durations and quick focus means that she flounders when she doesn't have her buffs or NP available, but Double Scotty gives you crazy firepower and consistency, fixing most of her weaknesses. It also lets you abuse a quirk of Mumio Sandansky. Each NP increases the damage of subsequent NPs until your first debuff expires. If you NP on consecutive turns or combo it with other defense reductions like Unreturning Formation, your target's gonna take substantially more damage each turn. And if you're feeling sadistic, you can hold Chikuchi for that third NP. In Gilfest, which is pretty much Nerofest 4, there's a high difficulty quest where you fight Leonidas and 300 Spartans. He has massive defense, and you're supposed to kill the Spartans to reduce that effect. What you can do instead is kill a few Spartans before dumping Okita NPs into him. You can't do it with double Scotty because of event restrictions, but Scotty Waver lets you pretty much ignore that mechanic, and abuse Mumio Sandansky until he explodes from accumulated defense debuffs. Speaking of Waver, there's a second option that involves him and Summer BB. This team focuses less on Okita's NP and more on her crits. Summer BB lets you lock a hand of two or three Okita cards. With this, you can line up Okita's crit buff with Waver's own suite of steroids and have three turns of crazy crit damage. You can lock BQQ for big crit damage that sets up your next turn, or you can go with an arts crit mix to play around her NP. If he falls short, Waver can top her off. Summer BB also provides a fair bit of tactical flexibility. She's got wave clear and she works as a secondary attacker, if something happens to Okita. Her crit damage is pretty nasty, so you're in good hands. As it turns out, going to Craigslist for a doctor takes you to some strange places. You end up in a dark storage room with two weird girls pouring stuff into a bathtub? You think it's filled with blood, but you might have just coughed that up. It's a whole to-do. One of the weirder synergies I found was with Elizabeth and Nightless Assassin. All three have defense-reducing abilities, and Elizabeth gives a double attack buff to other women. Disgaea packs a team-wide attack and quick buff, though the quick buff doesn't apply to her. And she's a respectable second threat because of her self-buffs and crit synergy. It's an odd team. Probably not gonna win any awards, but they get to feed Okita all kinds of strange shit and get away with it. Living the dream. I didn't create any particular teams for them, but Sherlock Holmes and Chiron are both synergistic characters with a lot of utility. Don't run them all on the same team, but if you have an interest in either, then you should budget Quartz accordingly. They're acceptable partners for Okita. For craft essences, Imaginary Around is a no-brainer. Okita's got a lot of eggs in the quick basket, so you may as well commit to that playstyle. Decapitating Bunny is a nice option with its invuln pierce, and then there's Dumplings Over Flowers, which gives both quick and NP damage. You can also take the crit approach and use Antumbra. As a 4-star craft essence, there's a good chance you've got a stack of these, and it gives a sick 30% crit damage when limit broken. And Guda-O is respectable, and you should have a limit broken copy from Guda-Guda-1. 
On a final note, you should consider Royal Brand as a Mystic Code for Okita teams. It gives a quick buff, star absorb, and sure hit, which are all things that she can exploit to some degree. Sure hit in particular lets you deal with that roach of a Lancer Ku Cullen. In summary, Okita is a solid character, but she suffers from short buffs that leave her milling around when her NP's down. That and she's a quick attacker in a Merlin meta, so she's going to be undervalued as a matter of course. However, the addition of characters like Scotty and Summer BB will give her the one thing she's always wanted. No, not a clean bill of health. Consistency. If you get her to the point where she can chain Mumio Sandansky, she makes enemies melt. It's a crazy amount of damage. It's a large investment, but you do get your money's worth. Uh, if I sold you on her, then I recommend rolling right now. Okita is on the same banner as Guda Guda Poster Girl, which is an extremely strong utility craft essence. So value-wise, it's a good time to roll. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, by all means like, sub, and cough on your friends. I don't fucking know. So I'm going to be doing two roll streams this weekend. Uh, one for Kualter and one for Okita, so follow me on Twitch if you're interested. See you next time.